Allen. Meine bessere Hälfte, Chris Roberts. It's uh, some pretty loud music there, so thank you very much for the nice entrance. Um, so hopefully you guys have been having a great day so far. Um, I, I yeah, I think the new format's actually quite fun. It was actually nice to get, run around a little bit and talk to people that were, say, playing in Universum and see it. And hopefully, hopefully you guys have gotten uh, the opportunity to spend a little time and talk to some of the devs. I mean, we had, the, we had the presentations in here, but also there was quite a few of uh, the dev staff that were down in the atrium showing various things like the PlanEd, SolEd, which is the planets in the, the uh, solar system editors. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys got to try the, uh, the uh, FOIP, the face over IP. I don't know. It's, uh, hopefully you did. It's pretty cool. It's made some strides since GamesCon and played in the planetary playground. So uh, you know, it's been a, uh, I think, Quite good, so let me. This thing's actually good. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, there you go. Well, anyway, I was talking about the auditorium, uh, where you know, I think we had some pretty interesting panels. Uh, it seemed like the animation guys did quite well with their uh, nice videos. Um, and obviously, the Pioneer panel we had just before here, which is something that I was uh, saying actually when I was wandering around in the Universum side, is the the extra amount of game mechanics that these planet that having the planets that we're building allows us, I think, is pretty exciting because there's a lot of potential gameplay that goes beyond just straight sort of combat or trading, which is what you would typically get in a, a space game. So that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, and then obviously, uh, you know, we spent some time talking about the beginning of the Stanton system. Uh, and I don't know if any of you got a chance, but uh, there's this really cool little My Radar app, which We'll now have uh, the four, the moons of Stanton and Delamar, uh, which is uh, which kind of pretty cool to watch it spin around on the MyRadar app. Um, and of course, the Raven was cool in the atrium. And uh, so hopefully you guys, like I said, had a good time in the, uh, the atrium talking to the devs. And uh, one of the things that we were doing there was uh, letting you guys sort of get a hands on with the weapons team. Uh, and we, we have a weapon that's uh, sort of a special skin for uh, Citizen Con, which uh, you can get on the, the web. But for everybody here, I think a fair number of you were sort of hands-on with the team, and they were sort of helping you guys were interacting, deciding, uh, or giving hit or feedback on like what a weapon design or color scheme could be. So I picked the two best ones. There was a few more than here, but these, these are the uh, two ones that... I felt could be okay in the game. There was a, there was a few that were maybe a, a little more colorful uh, or interesting, I should say. So what we're going to do, uh, because everybody that is here in CitizenCon will get the weapon that we pick for free in their account, and they can run around with it in 3.0 when 3.0 goes live. Um, so what I need you to do is pick. So we have A, So I wanna, uh, and then we have B. So I'm going to ask... I'm going to say, uh, who likes A, and then let's see how loud you are, and then who likes B, see how loud you are. So, who would like to have A be the weapon they get? <laughs> okay, that's pretty loud, so let's see how the B fans are going to do. Who would like B to be the weapon they get? Okay, I have, I, that sounded exactly the same. <laughs> Okay, all right, we're going to do it one more time. Be really loud for the one you want. A. B. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think...
All right, screw it, both of you. We'll do both of them. You guys. Um, all right, and yeah, obviously, uh, hopefully, you guys went and played in uh, the Universum. You can play a, a little bit of uh, a taste of kind of what it's like flying around and interacting on one of the moons of 3.0. And uh, those machines are all set up with the fast Optane drives and the Intel stuff, so uh, I think it was pretty fluid. Uh, it was pretty cool. So hopefully, you guys had fun. Who got to play? Who played up in Universum here? Okay, all right. Uh, and then, yes, you got to mingle with the devs, which was, uh, I think, pretty cool. Hopefully, you guys got to talk to other devs besides maybe me. Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> and uh, then we had our live stream, which I did hear that there was some lag apparently on, but... Um, yeah, I, yeah. We, we spent a lot of money in this venue to upgrade their internet, so it certainly wasn't that. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to blame it on Twitch at the moment. Um, and I was watching some of it back when we were working the presentation back there, and I wasn't getting lag. I was getting a couple of, uh, like, it would pause, and then it would be fine. But it, I didn't get lag, and it wasn't stuttering. But I, who knows? Who knows? It's our curse. Anyway, um, here we go. So what's next? Um, so right now, as most of you know, we're working on uh, getting 3.0 out. We've currently got it in. Eva Catty testing. Are there any Eva Catty members here? Okay, well, thank you guys very much because you're dealing with the, the painful part of it where it crashes a lot and you guys have to sort of not concentrate on the fun but concentrate on the areas. We say, please, we need a lot of people playing this thing. And I have to say, I don't know what you guys do, but our QA staff never managed to do the things that you guys did to the servers. So we were like, oh, this is looking good. It's 30 frames a second. And, and we put it live to you guys. And it's like, oh, oh is, now eight frames a second. What do they got? Oh, they've got 20 staff errors. What are they doing? Uh, so <laughs> but yes, it's, as I said, so we're in the, we're in the final um, test. And one of the nice things about uh, what we're delivering 3.0 is also the delta patching. So. You know, on the dev side, we use it all the time. Our updates are way quicker. I think probably for you guys on Evercaddy, when you download, it's nice not to download 20 gigs every time there's an update. Uh, and so I think, I think that's going to be better for iterative stuff, and it's definitely going to be better uh, down the road uh, for our sort of future develop, yeah, future delivery of content and features and patches. So we're quite excited by the Delta patcher. and. And as we move into the wider PTU and then live, everybody's going to get to experience. But it definitely makes your life uh, much easier and getting sort of quick patches and updates uh, is much uh, less of a deal. And if you've got constricted bandwidth, I think it, it's definitely something you want. Um, so uh, what are we going to do after 3.0 is out in the very, very near future? Um, <laughs> so we, we've decided going after 3.0 that uh, we're going to shift to a date-driven model versus a content-driven model. Uh, so our goal is to do quarterly releases, and we're going to have a roadmap of features and content that we're working on. And the ones that sort of make the date get in that release, and if not, they'll shift to the, the quarterly release after it. And so the idea is to try to have more regular updates for you guys to play, so you can give us feedback and iterate on and you see the game grow. Because 3.0, obviously, it's been quite a while since we delivered the last patch, which was 2.6.3. But really, the last major patch was 2.6. So it's been, you know, whatever it is now, sort of since 2.6, uh, 10 months or so. And uh, that's just too long to sort of have a sort of content drought for you guys. So uh, after 3.0, now that we feel that we've got the bones in place for the persistent universe in terms of, you know, fully persistent ships, characters, items, uh, uh, you know, the planetary system, item 2.0, you know, a whole, you know, the entire UI, the Moby Glass, all that's been revised. Uh, feels like it's a really nice building block to be dropping on features as we go and content as we grow. So going forward, the plan on Star Citizen is to, uh, like I said, be date-driven, not so much feature or content-driven, which 3.0 is sort of feature lock because we have to deliver a lot of these things all together else you know any individual one of them won't work um, so I think that'll mean 
a better, sort of more regular uh, experience for you guys, which will be good because after if there's a content drought for a while, everyone sort of gets a bit bored, and that's not, not, not very good. Um, so we'll, we're aiming to do that going forward after 3.0, and the new Delta patch is definitely going to be something that helps us from, uh, do that, uh, which will be good. Um, and uh, you know we're working on our sort of production report formatting, so next week we're going to update it, I think, to be a sort of a little more uh, readable or understanding for the close down of 3.0. And beyond 3.0, we're going to present a full roadmap uh, for the Star Citizen roadmap in terms of what features and content we're working on in what order. And that will be uh, as we go live with 3.0, we'll um, release that with you guys. And then we'll also present a roadmap uh, for Squadron during a holiday live stream, as well as show you uh, you know, a portion of what we've been working on on Squadron. Uh, so that's sort of our plan going forward. And along the lines of that, um, we are now going to give you a bit of a preview of what we've been working on beyond 3.0 for Star Citizen. Um, so this is the fun bit. Um, so, Glenn, let's get onto the stage here. Okay. So, uh, as a lot of you would probably uh, recognize this. This is Astro Amada that's in Art Corp, which you probably know from when we released the social module. And one of our challenges is that, you know, the new paradigm of Star Citizen is you can go to all these planets, you can explore all the planets. We're not just going to have a cutscene to go down to the surface and have a very limited landing area. So, the old Art Corp, you basically were in a sort of well detailed first, pe first person small level and everything outside of it was sort of a, you know, kind of this, you know, it was sort of, it was basically faked. Um, and in the new way, new planetary tech we can't. So here we are in Astro Amada, um, the Ravens there, which is the, uh, you know, the spaceship that goes with the Octane. And uh, beyond 3.0, we're going to let you, we're going to add the ability to buy or lease ships. Uh, so that would be, you know, the first place you're probably doing that would actually be on Art Corp in the Astro Amada store. And, uh, of course, you're also seeing some level of our Subsumption AI going on, which is also something we're continually working on improving. And next year, uh, it will be even more self-aware. Right, let's uh, head out. Okay, so we've got a bit bigger. The big difference with Art Corp that we have now is that uh, there isn't really a skybox. Everything is real. So, well, not real, it's, well, it's digital, but it's there. It's a digital, digital uh, thing. So let's, uh, let's just head through the main uh, plaza of uh, Area 18 here in Art Corp, which, uh, you, like I said, you guys will have known from the social module, although it's quite a bit different than it was in terms of scope, scale. Obviously, you can see a lot of the uh, advertising and uh, vibe stuff. But let's head out through the customs. You're clear. Move along. All right, let's go. Everyone's in a line, as always, if you're going anywhere to get through uh, immigration. There we go, uh, the main flying pass. So, yeah, very Blade Runner-esque, we got going. This is a Terrapin, uh, which uh, again uh, isn't in 3.0, but is um, going to be just after 3.0. Although I think we should probably, Glenn, shouldn't really, let's, let's start the, the small amount, right? 
The new Aurora, perhaps. <laughs> Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Engines are on. All right, let's, let's take a take go, off. Let's go flag. I'm not sure we're going to let you actually get this close to the populated areas, but we'll let you guys do it. <laughs> you're seeing here is ArcCorp, uh, which is essentially a, you know, a, a full-size, Earth-sized planet completely covered with man-made structures and at a real scale. So you're seeing everything to the horizon uh, fully covered. Uh, you can basically fly all over ArcCorp. You can see up in the distance another city club. So that up in the distance is area area 17, and we're flying over the suburbs now. So this is pretty much Coruscant. And this is this is uh, our engine wizard engine wizards in, in the Frankfurt office. Uh, who's doing this? So, Mar Marco Cabrera and Alex Ramati, who will be out here in a bit. And actually, area um, 17 over there is about 25 kilometers in the distance. So, we're just gonna. gonna head over to it.
building on our bigger, more populated planets, multiple uh, landing zones. So Area 18 is one of them. Area 17 would be potentially another one. And we'd have quite a few around Arcpop because it's such a big planet and the detail and the scale that we're going for. Uh, we sort of feel like it has to be more than just one landing zone or two landing zones and then nothing else on the rest of the planet. So it has to feel believable at the scale of our universe. And that's always quite a challenge, but some of the technology that we've been building is allowing us to do that, as you can sort of see from uh, the visuals that we're flying around here, where we literally have a planet covered by a city. So uh, Arcorp is one of our planets. Let's uh, kind of head up to space, I think, here in a bit, Glenn. We can have a little view of Area 17 as we go beside it, though. I don't think any other game has quite got this level of scale. Don't worry, we're working hard on it for you guys. We'll have quite a few space stations in geosynchronous orbit so that when, uh, say, someone with a, a large ship like a hull C or a D brings in cargo, we go to the space station and then the cargo can be offloaded and brought down to the planet. Um, so we're just going to head to one of them. It's built using a, a new modular space station uh, setup. Uh, and uh, it's actually beyond 3.0, you're going to see a lot of space stations and variety and we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to put them together and build them up in around the Stanton system and the other systems as we expand out. And the key is it's all, you know, we're not low, there's, you know, there's no loading screens or anything. It's, we just flew up from 
the city we were down in area 18 then we were flying around these huge skyscrapers and now we're just heading up to the orbital uh, space station Glenn's just showing off. Like I said, one of the places where cargo would come in, it would be unloaded, and then there would be NPCs or a player could potentially take smaller amounts down. But to give you an idea of this is, you know, the beauty of the sort of Star Citizen 64-bit precision is like we fully, fully, you know, it's all there. We're up here on a space station looking down on the planet. Jump? I don't know, Glenn. Should we jump or not jump? Nah, I don't think so, right? back on the platform. Well, no, his, his, uh, his EVA counters the gravity. Plus, gravity is much weaker up here than it's down on the planet. So the gravity is actually properly simulated all the way through, based on your distance from the center of the planet. You want to get up? Hmm. All right. So inside, in, inside these, these are all uh, got interiors, and in fact, uh, we'll we'll show you kind of how we build them in a in a second. Uh, but yeah, just give you the idea of the scale, because you know this space station didn't look that big from a while ago, and of course, see how big it is now that we're up close. Uh, and if we go through here, there'll be uh, an elevator we get through on the other side that would get us into the, the atrium. But we'll show you a bit of that in a little bit. Um, let's uh, let's kind of continue on with our journey.
that got? No, it doesn't look very big. That's because we're sort of zoomed uh, out on the star map. But Lawville is 23 million, 205,500, whatever that is, 968, 66 now, uh, 68 kilometers away, um, which is quite a long distance. So should we start our quantum? We've upgraded the, uh, the the whole sort of jump effects and everything using the new GPU particle system that's coming in with 3.0. Yeah, again, yeah, another thing that we've added, which you can see with the contrails and the engine trails. Now, 23 million kilometers, even at 0.2 of the speed of light, takes about eight minutes. Now, and actually, in the gameplay side of things, it probably would actually take you longer for the journey because you'll probably get pulled out of quantum by you know some other ships or and they'll be probably we won't probably let you go one jump directly to the other jump because there needs to be some time invested in getting there like taking cargo or whatever else uh, but just a pure and updated uninterrupted jumps about eight minutes at our quantum speed so while we're doing that we're going to take a little bit of time to reflect back on the tech that you saw uh, on uh, on display so Sean you want to come to the stage and uh, Alex Ramati who's one of the uh, key people at procedural tech. Uh, and I'll hand it over to them to sort of talk about what you, how we built some of the stuff you just saw. All right, hi there, everyone. So for those that don't know me, my name's Sean Tracy. I'm the tech director of content here at Cloud Imperium Games. And up here on stage with me is one of the bright minds behind some of the content that you saw there in Area 18 and R Corp, and behind some of the tools, um, and his name's Alex Ramadi. He's our lead technical artist at Cloud Imperium Games. So, figured while we're on our way to Hurston that we kind of show you a little bit about the tools and uh, basically how we're going to go about filling, you know, hundreds of systems with just as many planets with, you know, meaningful content and uh, things to do for you guys. Um, and the way we're going to do that is through super powerful tools, really talented art teams, really powerful and uh, hyper-intelligent engineers. So we're going to have to go picture in picture here for a minute. All right. So go ahead, run the tools. All right, so the first one I want to talk a little bit about is our procedural city generator. So here, uh, it's a top-down sort of tool that we've built for the artists and the designers. And what they basically do, they draw the perimeters of all their districts. Now, I realize it looks a little bit about like Minesweeper or um, even like a SimCity kind of look, but actually, it, that's a really nice interface to this kind of thing. So you see what he's actually done here is all the T's are little transportation districts, and all the little yellow H's are actually an elevated area. So these are different districts with different properties within them. And it's important that all those districts connect to each other because, of course, if we've got NPCs living there, uh, that's going to be an important point. Then we hit fill the city layout. And this is when all the models and everything starts to get propagated. But I should mention, it's, it's not just models, it's particle effects, it's NPCs, it's shops, it's signs, it's all kinds of different content that really make the game for you. The other important part of it is uh, being able to set you know, the actual districts. So it's things like commercial, residential, industrial, and you might have heard of these before. Um, and he sets different heights. These ones are suburban areas, or suburb areas. And this is where you know, the NPCs will live. It'll be different habitation sort of areas. And then we hit save city layout, and we've got our city. So. Uh, it's a really exciting tool set, and again, this comes from lots of artwork and really, really, really intelligent engineers. So you can see that in the distance is our elevated area. We've got a sort of industrial area that's been built up. You've got the signs, you've got the shops, um, yeah, and you could even see before when it was a little uh, higher up that there's transportation between all of these districts, so you can still move around between, and that could be monorails, that could be roads, that could be whatever uh, you know, the artists actually come up with or design, rather, they come up with it. 
So as he flies around, you can see that this was more the commercial kind of area. This is where you'd find some of your shops, things like Dumper's Depot. And then over here was that sort of suburb area that he actually built up. So again, it's a really powerful tool set, but it's really only one piece of the puzzle. So the next piece of that puzzle is building up the interiors to this. So keeping that same concept in mind, we load up a different tool set. And this one is called, we call it our layout editor. So this is our interior layout editor, and it can be used for all kinds of things. So here is our DataForge editor. You might have seen this on ATV before. And this is where we set up all our you know, real meaningful data. So these are different libraries that are used. But for the artists and designers, what they actually use is a flow graph system. And each of those boxes or nodes are actually rooms. And each of the connections are hallways or doors or elevators and things like this. And you can see that all the rooms are connected in a, in a certain way and in a meaningful gameplay way. So those are elevator shafts. We might have a mission giver room. We might have a treasure room. We might have a pickup room. We might have a secret room. Um, there's all sorts of different properties that go within them. Once we've got that flow graph, we go to our editor. We load that flow graph. Then we give it a deterministic seed. And click OK. And the tools go ahead and build that environment for us. So now, an artist... So an artist or a designer could absolutely build this. There's no reason why they couldn't. But there's a lot to do here. So you've got to connect walls. You've got to put lights in. You've got to place NPCs. Uh, even some kind of technical things. We've got to place uh, atmosphere areas. We have our room system. We have a power system. And one of the problems with that is that, it, it, one, it's a little prone to error. So like, oh, if I forgot my link, I didn't name it right or whatever. Um, or I used an art kit that the art team wasn't quite ready for, things like this. So it kind of mitigates that problem. But you can see there's very meaningful content. And we've got you know, a level of like Port Olisar already generated within a couple minutes. And again, design or an artist could absolutely do this. But Again, we've got to fill a massive amount of content here. So he explores around a little bit. Um, we can see that there was, a, there was a shop earlier. I think we might have gone through Cassaba. Check that out. And the other thing about it is a lot of these sort of systems will only generate like a certain one floor. But again, if we put like a, uh, like a stairs uh, node within it, we're going to get different, uh, different levels. So here we load a different flow graph. This one is uh, a different procedural seed. And it builds up right again. So again, we can regenerate and regenerate and regenerate so many different sets of these interiors. All right, so that's the second piece of the puzzle. And the third piece of the puzzle, and one of the more exciting ones, do you want to run the next video? Is integrating it into our planet ecosystems. So the ecosystems, and what happens in this video is we're changing some of the properties just off screen of the ecosystem scattering. So it actually scatters all of these assets. So again, the cities plus the interiors within them, and it integrates them seamlessly into the R-Corp uh, uh, cities. So you can see there's Area 17 in the background. Kind of looks like LA with the smog. Um, but we change some of these different properties, and you can see the scattering happens over and over. So we're about to hit Hurston here. I'm going to go ahead and give it back over to Chris. But I really hope you guys enjoyed the tools, and really thank the team for working on that stuff. through the space, we haven't done any loading, it's all in the same star system. And now uh, we're uh, in orbit, like high orbit actually, well, quite a ways out from uh, Hurston, uh, which is another planet inside the Stanton system. ArcCorp was owned by, is owned by ArcCorp. In the Stanton system, the UE leased each one of the major Earth-type planets to different corporations. In this case, it's Hurston Dynamics, uh, 
which primarily is a weapons manufacturer. And Hurston itself is the kind of, it, it's the sort of planet that is what happens when there is no regulation and there's no environmental protection. So it's probably uh, going to be like China in 100 years or America after the EPA has been dismantled. Uh, but uh, so let's just head down. Uh, and, uh, you know, this will be an example of a different style of planet and, uh, you know, ecosystem biome. And it's still, we're still early days on this because obviously, uh, you know, we're still getting three, uh, three zero out views of the environment and the sort of pr procedural uh, planet team have been working on ArcCorp and uh, Hurston because they finished all their three zero stuff. And this is, we're preparing for the next uh, major release. Um, all this stuff, but there's still a ways to go. So remember, all this is work in progress, and there'll be a lot. It'll be a lot better and cooler uh, when you actually get your hands on it um, in the future. So we're just gonna we're just gonna do a short distance uh, short distance quantum travel. So we actually do allow. We have two kinds of quantum travel in three zero and beyond. One is a long distance one, like the one we went between Arc Corp and Hurston between major celestial bodies, and then we have short distance quantum travel that allows you to navigate around or circumnavigate um, large celestial bodies. So like here, we're just going to come much closer up to uh, a, uh, the kind of sort of low, or low orbit gateway into, uh, into Hurston. So I'll let Glenn take us down with his consummate flying skills. Yeah, so uh, you know the the the, the yeah, German engine team that does all the procedural planet stuff has uh, been adding obviously a lot of stuff to the procedural planet tech. Um, the oceans have all been ported over to GPU, and ultimately we're not doing it here, but um, you know there, there actually has if we get low enough, you'll probably see there's it's full wave uh, simulation. 
When we get low enough, we want to have the thing where the wake from the ship creates waves. Not, that's not in yet, but we will be doing that at some point. Yes. Well, as you know. But we're heading in our way to Lawville, which is the, uh, the main landing zone on Hurston. So, uh, And as we sort of build this out in the future, there'll be a lot more sort of mining infrastructure. This is basically an area that uh, Hurston sort of strip mined for all the minerals and creating its weapons and its sort of factories that we'll see, we'll get to in a bit. But uh, as we move forward, we've just sort of begin the beginning of fleshing out sort of the secondary locations and objects. Uh, we're going to add things like, you know, big, you know, macro vehicles that would be excavating dirt and stuff. And, uh, give it a, uh, a lot more variety because Sirson's going to have quite a few more ecosystems than we're showing right here. But uh, let's head up towards Sirson. Uh, you can actually see in the distance the the big Sirson dynamic. It's sort of like the Tyrell building from Blade Runner. So that's the main uh, area. And actually, when you land in Sirson, that's where you're likely to land, and it has all these beautiful. Uh, shops inside and it's all nice but the outside of it's all kind of smog and factories and polluted air so let's sort of fly up through and again uh lawville's built using using the same tech it's a different kind of building set uh for a lot of it but it's using the same sort of distribution tech that we do uh to to, to sort of build out a city at a a realistic scale for the for the ships that we have in the game, so, you know, which is kind of important for our game because we want to have everything feel real, visceral, tactile. And you can sort of appreciate just the sheer scale of these planets because you know off in the distance, Hurston didn't look very big, and now we're flying through it, uh, and you know it's. Uh, yeah, these are pretty tall, big buildings. Glenn likes to show off. <laughs> so let's let's sort of head to the uh, outskirts um, outside the city because we want to sort of give you a sense of kind of what it's like in the ecosystems outside and then also the sense of scale that you get because uh, you know when you're flying around you're moving pretty fast I mean we're flying at um, you know a pretty uh, fair clip relatively I don't think they'd like you flying around um, say Frankfurt at this speed just above it um, but to give you the sense of being able to you know fly over a planet and then get down on the ground it's all seamless and also all the details so we'll just go out here beyond uh, 
the main city areas and uh, find a landing spot. one that's not rock. There you go. So here we are, we're down on the ground and you actually can sort of see the large uh, structures off in the distance which maybe didn't look so big when we were flying over them, but really actually are quite massive. Um, and this is kind of like the kind of tundra area outside Lawville. Um, and let's, uh, let's go for a little run. And again, this is sort of what our goal is, is to try to kind of deliver the kind of, you know, on foot, first person crisis level of detail for the environments uh, that you're in. But, you know, doing a lot of it procedurally and, uh, you know, on a planetary scale. So it's, it's quite challenging, uh, but I'm you know, very confident that we're going to deliver all that goal. And, you know, the team we have doing it, who, you know, a lot of them were here giving a talk earlier, are incredibly talented. Um, and uh, I'm pretty excited by the potential. I mean, we've got a lot to go in terms of building further ecosystems, also creating fauna for planets. So there's a, there's a sense of wildlife. Some could be hostile, some could be passive. Uh, but you know, we essentially want to make these planets living places that feel visceral, that have their own identity. You know, when you go to Art Corp or you go to Hurston, they feel totally different. Uh, you know, they match with the sort of story and the history and the lore and they feel tactile, they feel like a place that you could visit, a place that you could go and tell stories of and take uh, you know, pictures of or share with your friends. So someone's conveniently left us a knot. So we can use that to get a bit closer into the city. sort of can see the, the city stuff that seemed quite small as we flew over it. We're down on the ground and it's pretty huge. Oh, all right, let's see if... Oh! Glenn, you're just showing off now. show off glad <laughs> I don't think it's that good of a show off so here we're sort of coming to the outskirts of one of the city the uh, factory areas of Lawville And again, we just have the beginnings of sort of our MPC population system. So some of the other stuff besides the interior procedural stuff is, uh, you know, uh, longer term we're working on sort of a 
background crowd, crowd simulation system, a traffic simulation for ships coming and going in the background. Uh, yeah, that's, the knock says it's a little physics bugs going on. Uh, then we have foreground NPCs that would be like mission givers that have their own full schedules and stuff like that. Um, but all the places will get populated and feel uh, like they're full of life. So you'll have a, you know, like I said, the whole goal is to have 90% NPCs to 10% players in the universe. <coughs> and when you come to a place like Lawville or a place like Art Corp, it has to feel like, you know, it has millions of people in it because these cities are of that scale and that's sort of what we're used to. And so we're working very hard to build background systems to be able to do that, scale it, create them on demand, and create a you know, realistic feeling location on whatever planet you're visiting. So as you can see, there's the Hurston Dynamics uh, you know, main building off in the distance. So it's uh, uh, you know, again, that gives you a sense of like the scope and the scale of the city really is uh, compared to what we're doing now. And as I said, one of the things we're working on is fauna. So, uh, <laughs> so these are first. These are the Oni, the cyphopods, uh, Oni crabs. So they're little scavengers on um, Hurston. And there's quite a few other things that we're going to have on Hurston. We'll do it. Um, but in the, you'll have them running around and a bunch of other ones. But there you go. There's. There's Lawville, there's Hurston. So, that's the sort of preview uh, of where we're going. And you can, <laughs> and you can see the, the amount of attention to detail and the, the amount of love and hard work that's going in from the team to do that because we really want to build out uh, the universe of Star Citizen to the level that matches the vision of us and you guys plus all the amazing concept art that everyone's done. So we, you know, you, people could say, no, you can't. That's crazy to do that. Well, our goal is to actually do it. Uh, and so they've been doing a great job. Um, a lot of the team here that's worked on this is here. Um, and I actually, at the end of here, I'd like to get all the team members up on the stage, people that have been showing stuff on the floor, help put the demos together, helping assist, do the live stream. So everyone that isn't necessary to run the cameras and live stream, why don't you come up on stage here to get a well-deserved uh, round of applause. So come on. And, Sand and where's Sandy? Let's bring Sandy out. Here we go. Get my other guys, come on. By, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I, Mar Marco Corbetta is here. He's quite shy, but he's actually uh, the prime engineer behind the procedural. He has quite a few other people in the engine team that are doing, but a lot of all this planned stuff is here to have Marco Corbetta. Ladies and gentlemen. I like to call out Marco because he's quite shy. He doesn't really want to have any attention. That's why he didn't want to do a panel or anything. But I like to embarrass him. But well done, Marco. It's awesome stuff. Uh, and the environment team that built all that stuff did an amazing job. I mean, you met quite a few of them. There's uh, Michelle Cooper back here. Where's Ian? Ian somewhere. There's Ian. <laughs> Pascal somewhere. I don't know where Pascal is. There's Pascal. 
So uh, I can't remember. I got anyone else here from the... Par- the I don't know. And then there's... Uh, where's Sasha? Is he hidden somewhere? Yeah. And there's Dan Truffin in the back who put together all the little NPCs for our corp and stuff. Um, what's that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, where is Josh? That's what I see. And where's Josh Herman? There he is, hiding in the back. So, and that was, so obviously the characters and the, uh, for the, the Oni Crab. And we got, we got quite a few other creatures in the pipeline, right, Josh? Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, but everyone, I mean, honestly, everyone here has done an amazing job and all the volunteers that have helped us do the event. Uh, it's been pretty awesome. I mean, I hope you guys like the, the new format. Um, I, I know. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Is someone going to say something on the... It says, happy fifth birthday. All right. Did I just cut it? Happy birthday, Wait a minute. There you go. It's all cake. Here, come on, Sandy. I'm sorry. <laughs> We want some cake. <laughs> All right, Jared, here, Jared. Go, Jared, here. There you go. All right, now I've got blue on my hands. All right, I, okay. <laughs> All right, but thank you. And by the way, um, the other thing that outside of everyone here has done an awesome job is everyone in the crowd and everybody watching online and everyone that's been in the, is in the community that's backed the game because we couldn't be making this game and doing stuff at this level of ambition without all your guys' support. So every, every day we are grateful that you guys allow us to be doing this. So thank you very much. And with that, I think we'll see you in the verse. Yeah? All right. Thank you, guys. Right, now I need to get my hands clean. (laughs) Yeah, get my hands clean.